I don't make videos for money. In fact, running this channel and the website that accompanies it has actually cost me quite a lot. Very few autistic advocates make any money out of what we do. Yet we still put in dozens of hours a week making content, helping people directly and engaging with others on social media, email and our websites. So why do we do it? What motivates myself and the many thousands of other autistic people worldwide to give up our leisure time and invest our own funds into helping other autists? Being autistic can be difficult. Of that there is no doubt. Ask anyone in the street if they think being autistic is an easy ride and they'll most likely respond that it can't be. The simple fact that being autistic puts us at a disadvantage is taken as read, but that's not the problem advocates and educators are working on. The issue we're all trying to address is that the majority of the world doesn't understand the real reasons why being autistic isn't a bed of roses. Ask anyone what the difficulties we face might be, and they'll most likely quote you a list of deficits like they were cataloguing the symptoms of a virus. If we're lucky, they'll talk about social functions, communication issues or narrow interests. If we're not, then they'll bring up unpleasant, misinformed ideas about emotional deficits, lack of empathy, or even criminal tendencies. The perception is always that our lives are difficult because we're deficient, and that it would be great if there were a cure or a therapy to fix our broken minds. It seems obvious to most people that we would naturally want to be like everyone else rather than separated from the crowd by our differences. Most Autistic people don't want that though. We don't want to be different people, to be brainwashed into being someone else's idea of right and proper. We want to be accepted for who we are. We want to educate people so they understand what being autistic means to us and why trying to cure us or change us is not only cruel, but a terrible mistake that would make humanity poorer. There's no shortage of content on this channel about autistic strengths, or of how many of the aspects of our lives that are portrayed as deficits can actually be seen as benefits if looked at through open-minded eyes. It's important we get that information out there, but those individual points are only tools to help us achieve a much greater task. For autistic people to prosper, our world must stop treating autism as a medical problem centred on autistic individuals. The trouble is not that autistic people don't fit in. It's that society sets boundaries that prevent us from contributing. We don't need to be cured or altered to be more compliant when society has the potential to progress towards accepting and embracing people who think differently. Of course, that's a much more difficult prospect than merely trying to force autistic and other neurodivergent people to stop being different, at least from the point of view of those in authority, the governments, the medical establishment, the educators and the corporations that direct the course of all our lives. It's much easier to sweep the minority who think and perceive the world differently into a box and call it a medical problem than it is to change the path of society. The concept of accepting autistic people and others whose minds process information differently, who sense and express themselves in distinctive ways and who challenge our perceptions of how we can think and feel is called neurodiversity. Like the drive to move society forward to embrace people of all colours, all sexualities, all abilities and all genders, it is a civil rights issue, not a medical problem. The spur behind this channel and the thousands of other creators to spend so much time on the details of autistic life and challenging the many harmful and inaccurate misconceptions about autistic people is to help the world understand 
that we are people deserving equal rights of respect and inclusion, not a medical problem to be solved. In the same way that people of colour have struggled to push the world towards understanding that human rights are not just there for white people, and our concepts of sexuality have inched beyond the narrow confines of heterosexual good, everything else bad. The thrust behind neurodiversity is for people with alternative thought processes to be accepted as a natural variation of humanity, rather than lesser individuals to be written off as medical casualties. We know that this is the way forward because there are already autistic people who have grown up in healthy, accepting environments and thrived. Whilst they're still in the minority, there are numerous autistic people who were recognised as different by their families and their novel ways of thinking encouraged, their sensory needs accommodated for and their natural talents allowed to blossom. Albeit, some of them come from privileged backgrounds with no shortage of money to support their development. Many of those I've met are the children of artists or musicians who were able to homeschool or hire tutors and allow those autistic children to grow into autistic adults without the trauma that most of us go through growing up. They've been given opportunities to go into careers that suit their strengths rather than being forced into a cutthroat job market that often sees their talents as threatening. Increasingly though, we're seeing autistic people who are not from such affluent backgrounds growing up being encouraged and nurtured rather than challenged and disciplined. Many of them have autistic parents who are doing everything they can to spare their kids from the worst treatment they themselves suffered. They cannot be assured of their children's future unless society progresses beyond the narrow view that autistic equals broken. They will leave the safety of the nest to be confronted with a hostile, unforgiving world that no amount of coaching and warnings can prepare them for. The reason we give our time as advocates is because we want to see those kids have a chance in this world, rather than be relegated to the sidelines as broken people. Many of us, even those who are now in their 20s, have faced challenges in life that they shouldn't, for the sole reason that they challenge the common perception of normal. We also see autistic people who face even greater challenges, who have intellectual disabilities or medical conditions like epilepsy being swept together under a catch-all label of severely autistic and denied the help they need because it's easier to categorise than provide tailored assistance for each individual need. If we can help people understand autism better and separate it from their other difficulties, they may get better provision too, rather than funnelled into whatever gutter of the welfare and medical system is easiest for the establishment. The struggle for acceptance and emancipation is a long one. Despite the progress that has been made on other civil rights issues, we still have a long way to go. Black people no longer have to use separate bathrooms or sit on a particular side of the bus, but there is still rampant prejudice and discrimination as the events of last summer demonstrated. Gay marriage may now be legal and acceptable across much of the Western world, but there is still institutional tolerance of homophobia. And even women still haven't achieved equality of pay and opportunity with men. Most of the people who achieve the limited progress we've made in those areas were driven by the same passions that autistic and other neurodivergent people are now. Neurodiversity is not a movement. It is a message. We are people, not a problem, and we will not stay silent. Thank you for watching. To watch more films about autistic life, click on the logo on the left to subscribe, or on one of the videos on the right to continue watching, or visit autistomatic.com.